For anyone who wants to learn cinematography, what are some of the best exercises they can do right now? Well, if you're trying to learn cinematography right now, I mean, I would say take out your phone and just shoot images and try to edit them together. I think that's a, bi a big part of shooting, at least for narrative, but I would assume this is true of anything, but I, I'm more, narrative is my field, is the, the way a sequence comes together is a big part of my job. It's not just pretty images. Um, pretty images are great. They're really fun. But it's how, you know, I mean, you know, as something as basic as wide shot and a couple close-ups, but getting used to that, watching, you know, if you're filming a person, this was a big thing. I remember when I started to learn this and working with, when I was inexperienced and working with inexperienced directors, and an actor would finish their last line and then they'd start walking, is directors would always have me follow them and then there was no place to cut. And I realized like, oh, but if you let them exit frame and then you cut right there, it's cleaner as opposed to a moving shot that then just cuts. And so, you know, our phones are wonderful cameras. They're better than the cameras I started with. So like, I, I, there's no shame in shooting with a phone when everybody's got one. So I think doing that, but then yeah, on your phone, they have editing programs or whatever. So whatever is, whatever you have at your fingertips, use that. But trying to learn how something comes together. I mean, I, I'm not super TikTok familiar, but I've seen some videos on there. And I have to say, it's pretty incredible watching some of the edits, some of them are unexpected, it's quick, It's there's a rhythm to it. And I guess maybe that's a part of it too, is the rhythm of how a sequence comes together. So I think shooting, but more specifically shooting and editing so that you see what doesn't work. Because it's really making mistakes. That's how you're gonna get better is by screwing up. Yeah. How did you begin editing films when you first Got your camera? Well, let's see. My first, when I, f the first editing I did was Super 8. So I guess that was, you know, film and it was, you had, I had this little box where you cut it. And so you're, I mean, you're literally holding up images and you're taping it together. So I mean, it's like proper old school, which really makes you think about what you're shooting. Now with digital, you know, you can just shoot, 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 shoot. And I think that can be, I mean, it's wonderful but it can be dangerous because you're not making as many decisions ahead of time. And I'm a believer in at least doing things thoughtfully and then experiment off of that. Uh, but after that, I, I mean, I, boy, I think I've edited every which way. I've edited on a flatbed, I've edited film by hand. I did, uh, what was, I, I had like a, a sketch comedy show I did at my local cable access and that was editing VHS to VHS, but you had to edit it linearly, so it wasn't non-linear edit. So it was, you'd pick your shot from here and then on this other, I, I, I barely even remember it. I remember it being a big pain in the butt though. And so I, yeah, I edited, I think I've, yeah, every single way that you can edit, I think I've tried. And now I've, I'm getting further and further away from it because I'm, you know, shooting, I have a few directors, well, maybe not even a few, maybe just a couple who involve me in the edit, but usually I shoot and then that's it. I don't see it again until it's time for color. Um, but some directors will send me rough cuts and ask for some my thoughts and I love that because I, I consider that all part of my job, the rhythm of a sequence and how it feels, how it progresses, uh, I'm, I, I love talking to editors, uh, rather directors in terms of editing. I think talking to a director about editing, how a sequence will come together, tells you uh, a bit about the tone, like starting wide, ending up close, something as basic as that, but the movement of a thing, is the sequence gonna end static? Are we gonna, do we want the whole thing to, so, so for me, editing is very connected to cinematography. Uh, which is dangerous because often I'm kept out of that part of it. So, yeah. How has the rhythm changed over the years? I know you'd said earlier that you were able to get a, a big screen TV and you're, you love watching the film grain of old movies. 
But how has the rhythm from old movies to now changed? Yeah, I think a lot about rhythm of modern film versus versus older films because you know audiences are we're we're used to montage. We're used to. I mean, you you see a com- a thirty second commercial now can have. I mean, I don't I don't even know how to hazard a guess. I mean, it could have three hundred cuts in it. You know, like it it it. But audiences are savvy, so they can take that in. The question is. You know what is helping your message a bit more? I have over the last few years, and this is the influence I think of a specific director I worked with, Charles Hood. He is very aware of when edits come, and he he has really influenced how I think of it. Is there? There's some kind of a quote. It might be Walter Murch, and I'm sure I'm butchering it. But every cut. Every time you cut, you're letting the audience off the hook. So it's sort of this idea of as you know, a scene is even if it's just dialogue, just two people talking. If you're able to block it out in such a way, or just a you know, a walk and talk, they're walking and you're just the camera's leading. If you can let that shot linger, it seems to me that you're more invested in the in the scene. And as soon as it starts cutting, and then it cuts, and then it cuts, and it cuts, that it's it's being almost pieced together later. And I do think there's something about that that I don't know. It it almost reminds you that you're watching a film or something. Whereas when shots are longer and you hold for longer, which is hard to do because that can get very boring. But if you can block a scene well and you know the, the actors in conjunction with the camera, and they sort of you can land in a close up, and then this actor moves here, and they go, and the camera moves. You, it's it's a dance, and if that's choreographed well, I, I think that's about the best that you can do is fewer cuts, and and a part of it is also watching filmmakers who I love, like Paul Thomas Anderson, somebody I love, one of the great filmmakers working. He does not cut a ton. He he let he lets the scenes breathe, but that's you know that's not for everyone. It's not to say it's right or wrong, but in terms of keeping people in in the story, that's something that I think helps. I think that's a tool that really helps people stay engaged. Is fewer cuts. Now we'll see how I feel a few years from now, but currently that's something that I'm trying to get better at is choreography.